Let's dive into the Egg Bowl real quick. It was on Thursday evening, Thanksgiving. Uh, the note that I've got written down here, so one, Ole Miss, their postgame win expectancy was 99%, but I wrote down finish drives. Mississippi State had eight opportunities inside the 40-yard line of Ole Miss and scored 20 total points. Uh, 2.5 points per opportunity. That ain't good. That ain't good. That's I, uh, the- I, text, I was texting friends of mine who were state fans and friends of mine who were Ole Miss fans during this game a lot. And my argument to both of them were this game started off with three consecutive field goals by both teams. And I just thought, I'm done. If these two coaches are going to are gonna pack their sack up in, in luggage and ship it off somewhere else and just play this game with no balls, I want no part of the Egg Bowl. Yeah. No part of the Egg Bowl at all. I was so disappointed in the first quarter of this football game. It was, I, it was I could strange. not tell you how how ballless it was for these teams to say they were playing so scared that they were just we'll just take this take field goals well and we'll i'll tell you this goals. with these two coaches these two offenses <laughs> these two quarterbacks we're kicking field goals it's not what people showed up for the egg ball for mike leach had this is how the first half went by the way so in the first half uh the score at halftime was Ole Miss 10 mississippi state six and state missed what two field goals yeah. And and had three. They dropped, made the first two. It, yeah, made the first two. Uh, but had three dropped passes in the end zone on a drive yeah. that also ended in a missed field goal. You have to be able to get points. You got to be able to get points. So I, I I was on uh, I was on ESPN Chicago on Wednesday, right? And, and Jonathan Hood was asking me about this game and whatnot, and he said, "All right, so I'm absolutely taking over 66 in this ball game." And I said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Like. Have you what if, you you need to pay attention to what is going on, uh, because DJ Durkin's defense is is the epitome of Ben don't break, and well, and and just totally different at the end of the year than they were at the beginning of the year. Yes, like this is this is a team that has improved on one side of the ball more more than maybe anybody all year. Started off god awful, had to be in the hundreds of rankings, and now might not just pretty good, but but pretty damn good. Yes, yes, they are. They are pretty, pretty damn good on defense. And state is much the same way. A really good defense. What Zach Arnett is doing on defense at state has been incredibly impressive. Uh, but that said, you still you, you had 420 total yards for Mississippi State, 388 for Ole Miss, and the opportunities were there. <laughs> Larry jumped in. Lamest egg bowl I've seen him forever. I mean, it kind of was, but it was still exciting. Well, it's only right? because of the first half. It's only because of the first half. It, <clears throat> this was so my my text to my buddy Moss, who who's the biggest state fan, and he's the best state fan. He's a great guy. Okay, like he doesn't he doesn't get involved in the bullshit. He wants good things for ever. Anyway, he's a decent dude. He. I told him when, the worst thing that could have happened was you making the first two field goals. If you yeah. miss the first field goal, you don't kick field goals again the rest of the game. You sack up. You go for it. I whatever. thought the same thing. You, <laughs> you, you make those first two. That is a terrible three-point shooter. That is a big man stepping behind the arc, everybody letting him shoot wide open and making the first one, and the other team all looking at each other and just smiling, saying, well, Yep, he's, he's not going to be clogging up the paint for the next 45 <laughs> minutes because he's going to be out there thinking he can make all those sons of bitches. Yep, and that's what happened. That's what happened. It was it was interesting to say the least. State had multiple opportunities, could not finish, and Ole Miss was able to. I mean they they put their stamp on it. Lane Kiffin looked very excited uh, about that game, and yep. and and cheers to him for for being excited. Obviously, they've won two straight Egg Bowls. That's a good thing in this rivalry if you can beat your uh your rival so i'm uh i'm curious what uh what the next step will be for lane kiffin uh, because obviously there's a lot of talk about him going a multitude of other places well i want to i want to talk about that a little bit but but also i want to address this here's the negative you get with light leach and i told this to all of my state fan friends leach is an analytical guy leach is a is a thinker and Leach is a planner. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. He doesn't really care. He he has a strategy and he has a plan. And sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. And that's the way the math guys live their life, right? You you get that, correct, Gary? Yes, yes. Because of that, rivalry means nothing. Like, he, he can't get his team up for a big game because he sees it as a game. And he doesn't care that the uniform on the other side 
looks differently and he's supposed to hate them more than than the uniform that he played last week. Like that's that's what you get when you bring in an analytical guy, a, a smart guy that doesn't this is the reason he talks at the same. He says funny things, but he doesn't say them in funny ways. He's it's, just it's almost, always monotone. You, you al- He's always here. You almost wish that you had somebody that was in between what Dan Mullen and yeah. Mike Leach were, right? Because Dan Mullen put yes. way too yes. much on the Egg Bowl and made it a little, right. too, a little too hostile, right? Bing, and- bingo. <laughs> uh, so that's that. So let's talk about the lane stuff. I, I, I heard from – so because – I'm a little connected into the LSU stuff. Yeah, uh, I I know some guys that are in the loop with with uh, and I and I follow some guys. And I listen to some guys, and these are guys I trust. Okay, they're rarely wrong about things, and they also don't make bold predictions. These are guys that are not in the predicting business. Okay, they don't break news. They don't do any of that stuff. They just they just hear what they hear, and they they know what it is, and they say, yeah, it. and they relay it out to yeah. o, Ole Miss. I mean, not Ole Miss, uh, Florida. Officially, I know everyone just assumes and ESPN said everyone's saying the same thing over and over and over again. Billy Napier is on Florida's list. Lane Kiffin got an official call yesterday from from Lane, you know, Lane for, from Florida. Sorry, yeah. Lane Lane got an official call from Florida. So they inquired. We I don't know if Diaz is gone or not out of Miami. That's one I'm kind of waiting to drop. We know he's going to get a call there. I know he at least got a call from LSU. Now, I don't know where he is on the hierarchy of Florida or LSU or any other job, but I will tell you the word from Sexton, and this is a quote from somebody who knows Sexton. He sees all, he has all these coaches as, as clients, right? He has yeah. the biggest client list of anybody. And he sees them all as commodities. Okay. Now the coach has to be along with this. He can't Sixton just doesn't get to make them do anything, but his, his words were, I need lane to get another job. He's trying to actively get lane another job because he also has Levy as a client and it's Levy's turn to get the next level job. And he believes that if he gets lane hired away, Levy will be the old Miss coach. Now he doesn't know that, but, but these are, these are the talks that are going on and he's looking at this like a commodity thing. He needs lane to go from four years and whatever million he's making to seven or eight years, which is going to be the next level deal. And then Levy goes from OC level to head coaching level and, and, Every, rising tide floats all boats. Yes. Okay. Yes. And my argument of, I know this pisses off my old Miss friends, but what they have to understand is the state of Mississippi is always going to kill you because we're now changing the game. The state of Mississippi has a law in the books that no state employee can have a contract. We, you can make however much you want, but no state employee can have a contract longer than four years. Okay. Because they are state employees. It doesn't matter if the boosters pay them. They can only have four-year contracts. Well, yes. now, now, uh, Michigan State has just thrown out eight years. Uh, Penn State is ten. I believe the Florida hire is going to be between seven and ten. I know that the LSU hire is going to be between eight and ten, and that is a game changer. If you're telling a head coach that I I can lock you up for four years, but my state won't allow me to pay you any more than that, any longer than that. Or you can go to one of these other institutions, one of these many other schools that are just as good, probably better right now, and and get a double that deal or longer than that. It ain't about dollars and cents anymore. It's about long-term security financially. That's going to always put Ole Miss at the back burner. State's kind of lucky in the damned if you do with Leeds. But ain't nobody coming to offer elites eight million, eight years deals. And and so they're not gonna have to worry about that. But but Lane, I I think those calls are getting made. Yeah. No, I'd I'd well, I know those calls are getting made. I just don't know if those schools are all gonna choose someone else. Mississippi State was able to kind of work around that uh that four year contract with Dan Mullen. You remember this uh every time he won what it was it five games, uh his contract automatically renewed. So it was like a never ending contract. And Ole Miss can and Ole Miss can do the same thing. Yeah, no, no, no. But that doesn't that doesn't matter if if you get an eight year deal. And then in three years, you lost your quarterback. You have two you losing seasons, and you want to get fired. You're about to get paid for eight years worth of money. If you get 
the four year deal every year. So let's say you have a year where you don't get to the well, five. There's, there's no chance for like what A and M has done with uh, with Jimbo, right? Which is yeah. a ten year, fully guaranteed, ninety four million dollar deal. That's and right. same thing Doesn't with Mel Tucker. Exist. Ten years, ninety five million, fully guaranteed. You can have all the escalators, but even getting that fifth year. So let's say you win five games two years in a row. All right, yeah. we want to fire you. Okay, we're still only buying you out for 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 four more years. This year plus the three plus the one that you earned in your getting five wins. Yeah, like we're still we're still only buying you out for five years instead of eight and ten or seven or whatever. But those are the new numbers. Yes, and it ain't because Ole Miss will have the same TV money that everybody else in the SEC is going to have, which is more than everybody else in the country. And they got rich guys around there that can come up with big dollar figures. You know, they can get to eight million a year, nine million a year, twelve million a year, whatever they want. But at, at some point in time, eight million a year times four years, as opposed to eight million a year times ten, 10. years or eight years, yeah. it's completely yeah, it, different. It's a completely different yes. game. They're behind the eight ball, and there ain't nothing they can do about it. Now, you uh, you are not wrong about that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.